Hair one, Spazzy Dragon here, aka Syndromes, and I just realized that I almost said heroin. Uh, apparently I'm not uh, the only one flying today, and in front of me there's a freelancer named Crush, but can you guess who that is? Say hello, Jax. It is me, Garrett Jax. How are you, Disco? Nice and full, actually. It looks like we have 112 people online. So, as you can see, we're both sitting outside of Ames Research Station, just chilling here and not being bothered by NPCs for some miraculous reason. I don't even know why. I'm I, I'm I'm, really, I'm I'm really turning into a 15 year old like white girl. I I'm I'm about to can't even even. So um, today we decided to just relax. I'm not even you know I'm not even recording my let's plays today. I just want to relax and we pretty much found a topic that we could talk about and it's pretty much our you know our favorite encounters when it comes to role play on disco because you know disco is still a role play sir and a lot of people still argue about how you know role play quality has been declining or it's like you know role play should be more matter than you know PvP with some engagement notices, but quite frankly, it, I don't see that that's the case. And both me and Jax uh, have been having very good roleplay encounters. So let's talk about roleplay in general, and you know some of the more interesting encounters. For <laughs> for example, uh, tell them about that piracy encounter. For example, um, which one are you referring to? The the one about the gift cash incident. Oh yeah, well I got uh, accosted by two Hagosha pirates, and uh, they were demanding uh, I don't know a couple million credits each for them, and which is fine. So I started typing in to give cash, and I just gave it to one, but I mistyped the name, and so I got an error message. They didn't get the cash. I didn't realize I got an error message. I go, um, so am I good to go? Can I leave? And they said, sure, you can leave thinking that the other player got the credits. Well, I was halfway across the system when they realized <laughs> neither of them got the credits, and so they PM me, good one, man, that was awesome, you were very clever. <laughs> <laughs> when there was no cleverness on my part whatsoever, it was just an accident, but it was funny, it was a good RP experience with them. They did threaten not to... Uh, for me not to ever come back that way again. <laughs> <laughs> that's one of the, that's a very interesting way how to like make enemies. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like some some of the most amusing role play encounters I personally have are actually places that I really don't hang around a lot. Uh, one of them was in uh, Delta, and it was actually a very accidental thing as well. Back then, I was uh, a part of the Jumping Zoners, the faction I created with Raoul. And what happened there is that we start role playing with Duncan. I think it was Duncan. He was the Prince of Galley at the same uh, at the time. So what I happened? Is, yeah, and we we actually had some Skype chats. Like, hey, we want to get some role play go going, so we could actually, you know, we could jump into uh, Galley and get some Cryo Cube because you know the Cryo Cube uh, jump trade was pretty popular at the time. And uh, so yeah, we we became sort of good with the Galax and one day Duncan was you know chilling out with us on his lit like literally on his royal prince guy right and we accidentally jumped him along with us to Omicron Delta right in front of the Freeport right as Doc Holiday was chilling outside of the Freeport <laughs> can you imagine his expression when the prince of Freaking Gallia! Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, like there were so many threads about like in roleplay that it sparked a massive amount of roleplay, and it was pretty much us going like lol. So an accidental situation created an enormous by jump trade by, by roleplay. <laughs> yeah, it was pretty much an interesting roleplay moment created by ridiculous amounts of overpowered jump trading. <laughs> oh, actually, uh, when it comes to piracy, I had a very, very interesting encounter. Like, someone, uh, someone actually started doing like, um, like the guy who I encountered was role playing a almost deaf guy, mm -hmm. and I literally like the only way that he would understand that I was asking from him something, right? 
I had to type on my character, my dude, this was in New York, I had to type in system chat that I was shouting for him to, un like, for him to respond, like, it's like, huh? <laughs> dude, can you stop, huh? Speak all louder. Caps wouldn't work? No, all caps wouldn't work, like, and he said, speak louder, and only when I went in full caps in freaking system chat, it's like, oh, why did you say so? <laughs> so... I, I can just imagine as like this one guy, presumably a pirate, just going in all caps about like something completely unrelated and system chat. And obviously the guy I was replying in local. Mm. Like, ah. So there's a fine line between roleplay and annoying. You know, I've discovered, like there was a couple AI vessels that were sitting in New York one time, and every time something happened, they would just type out beep. <gasps> <laughs> Jack. And, and so Jax. I asked them, I was like, you know, because people were complaining to me that this was getting really annoying. Jack. And so. <laughs> I'd hate to break it to you, but those were the Firestalker drones. Though That was my faction. <laughs> <laughs> no, this Sorry. Was, no, it wasn't. This was the other, uh, like a week ago. Oh. So then, uh, yeah. then probably was Scorch because he he can't give up that faction. He loved it so much, because uh, we were flying like there was like seven people. Uh, uh, I'll quickly finish this. We can continue. Okay, uh, like there were seven people uh, like flying together in Teep Speak with these things, all drones, mm -hmm. and uh, we would just go like, oh, okay, on my mark, system YB, three, two, one. It's like seven players. Beep 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 beep. <laughs> No, I don't think it was you guys. It was somebody else. No, it was. I know who it was. It was probably Scourge. It, no, it wasn't Scourge. It was somebody else. But hmm. the thing was, is like, I asked them. Like, people were complaining, so I asked them. It's like, you know, what's up with your role play here? I, I don't get it. And I said, well, we're trying to sound intimidating. <laughs> Beeps and. I say, I think you're, you're you're actually achieving annoyance, not intimidation. <laughs> you might want to vary it up a bit, but. So sometimes your RP, you know, you think you're getting across. Yeah. Keeps <laughs> Hello, <laughs> NFL. Uh, ooh. And then another thing with RP that I've noticed. Well, some people, did RP isn't their goal. I mean, it's obvious. Obviously. You know, people who are power trading, they don't, they don't really, they're not into the RP. They're just focused on credit earning. And so... This one guy today, I was on my admin, and he asked me, you know, here it says he got pirated and, and killed. You know, does he need to leave the system? He's a miner. He was a new guy. Yep. And I, so, and I told him, yeah, you you need to leave the system for two hours. Or and until so the guy logs off. Exactly. And I told him that. Or until the guy logs off. And so he was like, he was a little upset at first because he didn't realize he had to leave. So I didn't fight. Well, too bad. You got killed. You need to leave the system. <laughs> It's like I said, or you know what? Next time, if you don't want to leave, you know, here's a, a, a novel idea. Why don't you just pay the pirate? <gasps> I don't gasp. No, <laughs> <laughs> I don't pay pirates. Is what he said. All I right. said, well, why not? I hate pirates. And I'm like, you know what? If you pay the pirate, you'd be able to make more money. You know, it's like if your focus is all about earning credits, sure, you're going to hate the pirates. Obviously. But if your goal is about finding RP opportunities, then pay the pirate. Pay the pirate extra. I mean, I, that's what I did on my character, mining character. I, I pay, especially the female oh. pirates, I pay them extra. <laughs> that and, then, yeah. and then once the pirate has their money, I mean, there, there's a probably a good percentage that might just bolt and not want to RP with you. But I tell you, there's going to be some that do. I've had a lot of good experiences with, with role play with pirates. You know, once they got that's out of the way, credits are out of the way. Yeah, sure, they'll they'll RP with you yeah, a lot of times. But you know, if you're not interested in the RP, you're just as interested in the credits. You know, you're going to have a miserable time whenever okay, pirates come around. That actually reminds me of a certain encounter. It was back in '85, I think, early '85, when uh, we introduced the better mining mod. You know. You know, uh -huh. when mining actually became profitable for a lot of factions. So one of the factions that I created at the time was the MD Mining Company. So what we would do, we, we were kind of really shady IMG miners chilling out in Tau 23. And what we would do... Now, mind you, this was at the time where uh, when outcast activity was pretty high. 
Hagosh activity was pretty high, and independent and junker piracy was also pretty high. Like, it was the time of the pirates, right? So what happened is that we would be chilling out in the ore field, like, you know, borderline crashing the server with all the ore we were mining. So this pirate bomber and his buddy in a gunboat flies up, and they're like, Hey, you look like wealthy people. And, like, I was in in the uh, Skype call with uh, my friend, and, and we are like, <laughs> yes, uh, to each other in Skype. And it's like, yeah, maybe. It's like, hey, how about you pay us five million for mining in our field? And we just send them 200 million credits and told them, hey, stick around and make sure that no one else tries to bother us, and there's more when that came from. Like, this is this kind of roleplay that wouldn't be possible today. Like, we would mm -hmm. instantly be smacked for, like, allying with hostile IDs or something along the lines. Yep. And in the end, like, they called friends, and we said, like, make, like, for every uh, outcast or junker or whatever, every hostile you kill for us, you're gonna get a hundred million credits. So these guys just asked all of their friends to come online and we were like two IMG miners sitting in Basel, like uh, back then there was the Basel line miner, you know the mm -hmm. very smallest one, like two rank 13 Basel miners surrounded by, I'm not joking, seven pirate ID ships and all of them were guarding us. <laughs> That's e awesome. Even the fucking IMG didn't dare to enter the field. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, that kind of happened to me a little bit when I was on my minor character. I was an ICMG faction back in the day when that was a thing. Mm. And uh, I was so nice to pirates that a lot of them would just stand guard. You know, I wouldn't even t say, tell them to. They'd just do it. They'd just stick around RPing with me. And they'd be pirating other IMG or ICMG ships that were there, <laughs> leaving me alone. You know, it was, it was awesome. I mean, there's there's RP to be had. That's for sure. You just if that's your focus. Yeah, exactly. A lot of people complain that oh no, the amount of role play that Disco has to offer is decreasing. Um, that is a very stupid way to go into things. Like I I've seen a lot of new players, especially players who've done role play, you know, they come from role play communities, role play forums and such, right? And they come to discovery expecting role play that someone is going to bring role play up to them on a silver a silver platter and just go like, you know, here you go, here's role play. No, it doesn't work like that. You actually have to actively look for role play. Like, I've seen these guys, complete mutes, like, you know, people who don't talk a lot, that you usually see see them flying around in caps, for example, pewing stuff. Just open up a conversation with them. Do it. And it can turn out to be a very interesting moment. Like, uh, I started talking to this one guy, uh, LNS, a random LNS, I didn't even know the guy. And it turned out in, like, almost two hours of, like, philosophical nonsense being thrown back and forth. Who's this guy? It's a big dragon. It's a fat dragon. Who missed the lane. Apparently. So, yeah. But, again, I mean, the biggest problem with Disco right now, as, you know, a lot of players instantly like to point it out, right, that um, the server rules limit roleplay, but at the same time, you have people like me, for example, who, who really take... I kind of like finding loopholes and pointing them out, right? Mm -hmm. And it's pretty much because of people like me you, you can't really you know, loosen up the rules because we have community members like that who are going to abuse the rules, right? Right. There's so, so much. Like, for example, the same thing with the pirate ID. I mean, it can be done for... Like, you can use the pirate ID for so many good things, but people start, start you know, flying around New York with them just trying to shoot everything that moves. Yeah, don't get me started on the pirate ID. No, I will get you started on <laughs> pirate ID. Go for it. Oh man, it just you know, that's that's the thing. It's like it could be there could be so much good stuff in disco, but human nature gets in the way. The finding of loopholes, the working around the rules in order to accomplish things and agendas. To me, <laughs> yeah, to me this is the biggest biggest problem. It's a fundamental problem that people have. They try to they develop their role play 
and then they try to make the ID revolve around that. Where what they should do is have the ID and make their RP revolve around that. Does that make sense? It does make no, sense, obviously. Quit trying to make your RP more than what the game is allowed. There's plenty of room for the in the game for your RP to exist. But when you try to make these weird type situations, then it's not going to work. You know, and a lot of times with with the IDs that we have now, okay. or do an SRP. Yeah, yeah, actually on SRP, uh, like I don't know if a lot of people missed it, but I mean it's 250 million credits refundable, right? If it passes, so put some effort into the role play. Like check out the existing role plays, especially the older ones. Um, no offense, and I'm not going to, you know, point out specific names, but some of these are very generic. Like, you know, you just need to show that you can do effort into roleplay, and you will get the SRP. Let me give you an example of a SRP that failed. It failed seven times. The guy. <laughs> I, I think I already know who that is. <laughs> we, we won't mention names. We know who it is. <laughs> we all know who it is. There is no way on Earth, or in Sirius, or that in Sirius. an infected wild is going to just hand you the plans to an umbrage. Alright? <laughs> I don't care how you spin it, it just doesn't make any sense at all. You're not going to get a phantom ship because a wild just decided to hand you the plans. Well, to be fair, Seven my times. SRP. Well, to be fair, my SRP was a human and nomad love story. <laughs> that would never happen either. <laughs> yeah, these days. No, the, uh, I mean, Errolim likes to point out, Hey, Errolim, um, oh, wait, you're probably not watching this because your internet sucks and your <laughs> fucking video player doesn't load. Uh, and he tells me to bring back Arthur Degar a lot, which was my first and last SRP. But the problem uh -huh. is, a roleplay like that does, doesn't really have, like, room in Disco anymore. It doesn't, it, it, Disco can't support nonsense like that. I mean, we, no, we, we, we took, like, we pretty much took uh, the choice that we want to have some more quality, more serious, more, you know, <laughs> gritty roleplay, and something stupid that can be summed up, a nomad human love story just doesn't sound right <laughs> these days. Yeah. But it's not that hard to get something through an SRP. It just has to make some sense. I mean, it has to not go beyond, you know, beyond what is, ex you know... Expected. Expected, yeah. So, it's not th it's not that hard, and you get your money back, like you said. It's make it's just an initial expense, just to make sure that you put effort into it. Right, exactly. So, anyway, that's my thought on uh, on that. So this is something I really don't understand. For like like for example, what if the pirate like the generic pirate ID was made an SRP like and. You know, a lot of people was like, no, it's like I don't want to submit a role play. It's like why? It's like uh, you you ruin my my you ruin my character's role play. Why would I do that? It's like yeah, well, show that it is about the role play. Here you have the chance to make a backstory on the character, do some role play, do some forum stuff for it. Like you know, promote that character, and you will get a, you know, by that point the SRP is a bonus. Yeah. You know? So well, this is just something I don't stand these days. I was tempted to make the pirate ID an SRP, but it just kind of s seems kind of silly to do that. But we did have to nerf it yeah. because it doesn't make sense for a pirate to come up to a lawful and pirate him for money when their goal really isn't the money. It's just to work around the ID restriction so they can get the the blue, you know, uh, be able to attack lawfuls. I'm not going to agree with that, but the problem is that it you physically cannot roleplay that sort of attitude without looking like you're looking for PvP. There's physically no way. I mean, I could point at a few couple of people who legitimately can do this because their character is developed like that, but there's no way I can I could somehow prove that no, they're doing it for the roleplay and not for the PvP. There's physically no way you can do that. Now that's the problem. I can prove it. I can prove it easy. If I showed you, I would, wouldn't do it, but if I could show you the chat logs of every person that has a pirate ID, and I can sh I could determine Thanks from for how the loot. they play. <laughs> <laughs> I could determine from how they play whether. They Ow! 
Thanks. You dropped a nuke on you? <laughs> no, the NPC that died dropped a nuke on me. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Revenge of the Fallen. Yep. Yeah, so, so anyway, yeah, I can tell from the chat logs that people aren't interested, that pirate, a lot of the pirate players aren't interested in, in RP at all. They just want the PvP, which is fine, that has its place. Obviously. But then don't tell me you're into it for the RP, because you're not. <laughs> no, I mean, I could think of completely legitimate reasons why a pirate ID, uh, care, well, you know, let's, we were sort of looking at this from a roleplay perspective, right? There are legitimate reasons why a character would attack a military target, like a, you know, a, sen a sense of self gratification, a test of skill, a, a expression of dominance. Like these are all the humanistic factors that you know are common in a in a human being, right? But sadly, we can't express this in disco because you know the association is about you know PP whoring. So a lot of uh, no, th basically I know that this is done for the PvP, but please don't tell me that you know these characters have no reason to do that. People have a lot of reasons. Like you know, the world is a fucked up place, and the human psychological, like the human psyche, is even more fucked up, right? So you can't really say that they wouldn't do that. Yeah, but why can't they do that on an unlawful faction ID? Some do. Well, mo a lot don't. That's their I mean, choice, I suppose. It, and the problem is, is it it takes away from you know those dying unlawful factions that are out there. I mean, because you have an ID that's so much more OP than what the unlawful faction IDs are. I dare, I I'd pretty much argue that it's because of the ships. Quite frankly, like uh, the tech nerf list for the pirate ID is a little bit on the broad side like accompanied with the you know z zone of influence so it's it's by default very imbalanced when you take you know very small and agile ships uh, for example into say you know Britonia wh where all their fighters are a bit on the meaty side you know mm -hmm. so there's always always problem like that and I mean if you have the chance to use a superior ship you will use it for your own you know comfort of play, you know, it's not even about the roleplay anymore, it's you're just more comfortable when you go in game, you're more comfortable with that ID and that ship. So, so there you go. Yeah. Well, that's kind of my thinking on, on why the pirate ID was nerfed to begin with, because I think I think the disco, I don't know, how do you feel about the uh, um, official factions? I mean, do you think that there should be more more slant towards official factions, more perks for them, or do you feel, you know, try to make them more of an inducement for indies to join, or do you think that uh, it should be a level playing field for indie and and official factions altogether? Uh, you know, if you'd asked me this about two years ago, my reply would be completely different, and if you'd asked me that when I joined in 2008, my reply would be completely different again. It sort of goes with my experience in Disco and what I see that, you know, that is happening around. I've seen factions do amazing things which they wouldn't otherwise be able to do if they weren't official factions and at the same time I've seen like the stupid e egotistical bullshit that happens in official factions. So, you know, there's always a problem on either side. It, there isn't a very good choice. There's no way that I could say, no, the interplanter player should have all the fun because, you know, that they are pretty much the majority of our active player base, right? I mean, mm -hmm. it doesn't mean that all of them are high value, high quality role players, but I mean, these people came here to have fun and we should provide them with the equal opportunities and equal chances to have fun, just like the official factions. But the recent thread in my recent replies, I think I would still say that the official factions have one huge advantage over, you know, independent players, and that is the admin approved chance that they can influence the mod and the lore because this is actually the reason why official factions actually start to exist back in the day. These were player groups who were well known in the community. Like, you know, the back then official factions were very small, okay? 
And they were pretty much the unofficial uh, development team in charge of the lore. Because it was their job, like, it, it wasn't a privilege, it was their task to push the ID forward, the faction lore forward, you know, con uh, uh, work with other factions into, you know, evolving stuff, so stuff doesn't stagnate. But, I don't know, at which, at which point, I don't even remember at which point this happened, Is like, it shifted off from responsibilities and it shifted towards perks. I mean, obviously these players wanted to have some sort of, you know, gratification of their words, like, okay, I'm moving this along, but can I have some other nice things, you know, on the side? Right. And, you know, you can't really argue against that. I mean, if I put a lot of effort into things, then I, I do expect some sort of payment for it, even if it's just, you know, being happy with what I do, but apparently a lot of people don't really work on that level. Some people need something more. They need proof that what they did matters, and, you know, that's where the passion perks come in. I'm I'm of the same thought on that, because there, there is a level of accountability that we expect um, official factions to hold to, and there, it's not something that they can erase with a simple name change, like an independent player can. Exactly. And... And so, you know, since they have that accountability and, and a standard of behavior, um, then, you know, I think there should be, there should be some reward for that. Um, and so that's why, that's kind of why I, you know, we kind of came up with that official faction perk idea mm. was it's not something that the official factions are just going to be given. You know, uh, considering this video is watched by a lot of people who don't really check the forums, could you tell us, like, quickly explain what exactly like this whole faction perk is well you know without getting too much into it basically what it is it's an opportunity for official factions to be able to um, have one have their own player faction ID separate from the NPC ID and so what that means is that an official faction will be able to have changes alterations done to their ID that NPCs wouldn't NPC um, indies wouldn't yep that are, that are carrying the NPC ID and so the the official faction then will have some kind of flexibility in which to grow, yeah. and like what you were saying about lore changes and and things, those can be affected on the I, their ID, yeah. And by by having good behavior, you know, playing maybe they're role playing certain events, you know, or or just there's all kinds of different perks that that could be had. Um, by role playing it out. Uh, quite and frankly, it, for a moment there, I was about to protest against this by saying that, well, then it means that they're evolving their own ID with their own agenda and leaving all the other, you know, newbie players, eh, no, sorry, not newbie, indie players, like the, the ones that use their ID, you know, the NPC ID that they're actually role playing, uh, they are leaving these players behind. But quite frankly, nothing, you know, nothing says in those perks that if the changes are sound and basically you know you make the changes on their id test them see them what 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 bring uh, what good it brings what bad it brings nothing says that they can't then be transferred to the you know regular id at some point i have a um the the pay, the thread already um printed out um post um posted in admin forums so what it what it is what it's entailed and part of it is is not leaving the indie behind exactly because i mean they're part of they're a big part of the game like you said and yeah, so I'm kidding and they're go on oh, go ahead oh, anyway they so you know suppose a a faction was able to gain a perk of some sort you know one of the questions i ask in there is there a trickle down effect for the for the indie player yeah. you know cuz we don't want to leave them behind completely you know you know just and you know it is nice if they can follow along with the lore somewhat too so so it's gonna this official faction perk what it is is going to be a huge responsibility and we're putting on official faction leaders and their members they have to be accountable responsible um, set up a standard a high standard of role play and please for the love of God uh, make them you know have the momentum and keep going otherwise you know they're sitting on their asses on you know past achievements well they can lose achievements oh no or perks that's another thing and so whatever can be given can be taken away 
So there's that flexibility too. So say a faction, official faction starts, you know, being abusive or power gaming or meta gaming. Hey, we, you lose your perk. I mean, it's going to be a good incentive for, um, I call it a positive incentive to have good behavior. No because you want your faction to grow. Well, great. You know, I'll reward you for that, for your good behavior. But if you're going to be a butt to people, then we're just going to take your perks away, and you're going to be watching other factions grow. <laughs> so, actually, for a moment there, uh, again, I was going to say that uh, maybe focusing uh, that you know, lore development should be left to official factions might not be a very good idea. But then I remember all of the independent players, like uh, veteran players who made independent players and went did something, and it resulted in massive changes. So you can't really even say that, oh, indies won't have any chance to have any impact on the roleplay environment. No, they do. They always do. I mean, even if it's as bad, you know, I know, I realize this is a very negative thing to say, but a lot of factions are waiting for the chance to jump at each other's throats. Like, you know, they're they're waiting for the chance, right? So if some player, an independent, goes do does something stupid, like role play will happen, like regardless, consequences will be had, and one player can move a huge ton of things. Bye Oops. bye, Badenham Trading <laughs> Post. I what, barely was, knew you. What, <laughs> yes, you did knew it. You beamed to it. <laughs> I did not know you could beam to a player owned base, but. Uh, yeah, I accidentally beamed there and yeah. Well, like, now it hmm, now it exploded. Jax, what did you do? What, wasn't me. Did I you? do want to try out that new admin command though? <laughs> that kills bases. <laughs> yeah. Only problem is it doesn't leave an explosion effect, so you I, don't get the satisfaction of watching it blow. It just disappears. Yeah, you heard that, Allie? Go do it. Add <laughs> a huge mortar blast to it, like system wide blast. Oh, that that would be temptation beyond what I could bear. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Do man. another one! <laughs> <laughs> Jack's just flying around on his admin shin, just randomly spawning temporary bases, just blowing them up. People like trying to, people in Texas trying to have a huge RMLN brawl, and just Jack just got sitting in the corner of freaking system, blowing up bases, lagging everyone. It's like we. <laughs> Uh, at, oh. use, at its finest. But yeah, anyway, so as far as the um, indies go and the official faction perks, I expect there be there to be some kind of upset with that. But if, uh, indie players have a limited range of influence. I mean, they affect themselves. They can do oh, an yes, SRP, so. and they can they can better themselves through RP. That's actually yeah. a very good question. Uh, sorry that I interrupted you. Would you no like, for example, you have the official faction ID, right, which is going to allow their members to promote roleplay. Now, obviously, it's very realistic to say that not everyone in the uh, in the faction is going to be, you know, interested into contributing to the stuff, right? So obviously, there's going to be like four to three people actively contributing to the ID, right? Mm -hmm. Like, you know, doing the forum roleplay and uh, so on and so forth. Um, so that's the ID behind the faction ID. So uh, the point is that it's not all of the faction that drives it forward, right? So would you say that a SRP ID belonging to an individual could technically have the same amount of influence on what Discovery, like you know, on some sort of lore aspects of Discovery Freelancer? Like I have never seen that. I mean, could you give me an example of somebody that's ever done that, an indie player? Monstar. Like, but that guy speak. is synonymous with help, danger, He was an awesome, ouch. awesome terrorist in the game. I mean, he, that was... And I actually, you know, brought it up to, uh, as it suggested, maybe it's possible to have, allow one SRP terrorist in the game at a time. I thought that would be pretty cool, but it wouldn't be it wouldn't be total abused by you know several people or. This is actually know. something I really miss. Uh, like, um, when did you join? Um, I did server actual server. Yeah, February two thousand nine. Okay, so the phantoms were still around then, right? Yep. Um, do you remember the times where people? 
you know, didn't have enough liberties to just go in the forum and say, hey, this faction is shit because it doesn't, it do only does PvP and there's no roleplay benefit from it, blah blah blah, you know, as it's common today. Um, the, the Phantoms were a very instant faction for me to encounter because I realized the moment I saw these people on my radar, I was, I needed to do something, I needed help, I needed to run like these guys did not care for your cargo they did <laughs> not care for your wallet and they were a awesome addition to the game i don't care what other of what uh, other pe uh, people are going to say it's like eh, phantoms uh, they're only pp horse that in by itself they were a role play consequence in the form of a player group yeah, it was but, amazing. And, yeah. and I'm so sad. Like, if someone tried to do that today, they would be instantly compared to the, you know, uh, pirate ID troll groups in New York. It's kind of like the Nomads, the Kahara, and um, the Omicrons. Yeah. I mean, it's almost the same thing, but... And we get a lot of complaints about that. I mean, I think people are finally starting to understand, you know, this is acceptable now, but yeah. people do not like it. And I think Obviously. the culture in Desc Disco has changed to where they don't want that anymore. I mean, uh, I, I don't... Don't want danger or don't want to complain about it? Don't want the idea that they could be insta-killed with no, you know, just like that, with no, you know, opportunity to role-play or, or anything. So, people don't want that. I mean, not saying Kahara does that or anything, and just saying Actually, that... Actually, I've seen the Kahara itself being defanged very terribly, because now suddenly ro uh, nomads have to abide a very strict roleplay, quote, standard, not to seem a bunch of PvP wars. That's really sad, actually, because the nomads are a... They are danger made manifest. They are yeah. supposed to be, and uh, I, I mean, a lot of people will agree, but Obviously, it is really annoying that you can't roleplay yourself out of a predicament in a roleplay server. But there are some sort of dangers that are needed, otherwise things are a little bit too easy. But then again, I mean, I'm, I'm the sort of person who likes Dwarf Fortress. <laughs> so I can't really... St I, I can't really expect that all people are going to say the same knowledge. I mean, you know... A lot of people will simply say, well, this is a game, and, you know, I, I played for the fun. Yeah, I'm not sure what the motivation of people are. I mean, because there, there are some factions right now that are leaning towards, or trying to anyway, to be more terroristic. Yeah. And, and you know, basically just kill anybody and everybody, you know, in their own little world, you know, in their own system and stuff. I don't know. I mean... If I thought the community was mature enough to handle it, yeah, you know, then yeah. that's great. But I don't think it is at this point. And this is why we have so many rules and regulations and restrictions and tech shards and tech nerfs and... <sighs> yeah. Sadly. <laughs> actually, I was about to say, like... Um, I actually forgot what I was about to say. Uh, it, uh, I was going to say something along the lines that... I, I'm currently talking and trying to remember what the hell I was going to say, <laughs> and it doesn't work. And I, I keep think, I think the official faction perks will be a good thing, and I think it'll be a good thing for everybody, even indies. If anything, um, it's going to be something new. It's going to be a change. Yeah. It's going to be a yeah. change in the system, and people are going to be forced to adapt. Which yeah. always, if, which is if always you're an nice. official faction leader, the the very first thing you're going to think is, wow. I have options now. I have I can, the chance to do something big. Right. I can I can make leave my mark on disco. And it, it would be like you said before, you know, you can have events and stuff, but the events don't mean anything. PvP doesn't mean anything. RP doesn't mean anything unless you can leave a mark. And and right now it's you know, unless you can nag the devs to you know, to listen to you and and to make positive changes which you know hasn't really happened that much in the past frankly yeah it you know it it doesn't mean anything a whole lot it's just you just it just stale and stagnates but <laughs> with that that is actually a very interesting topic in by itself like uh to quote you leave your imprint on disco huh i mean yeah. <laughs> who wouldn't want to do that 
<laughs> Seriously, uh, I, I I can like even when I got perma banned for the first time, I could return as a player, you know, undercover. But I wouldn't be able to do that. I I mean, I need to have my name. I've done so much, like I've put so much effort in Disco that I can't help. I I can't have like you know, I can't have syndromes just fade away. I I can't like. I'm one of those people who can't do that. Yeah, I mean, because what happens is once you leave an imprint, you have an emotional attachment to it. You know? Yeah. You're, you're invested into it to a certain degree, and it makes it incredibly difficult to just walk away from that. Yeah, so, I mean, at the same time, you have so many people, like... I, I mean, you know, notable people of this skill, like, for a various amounts of reasons. We have uh, Bulldog and the admin, who was ad caching everywhere. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I remember... That was before my time. Yeah, I, I remember Rob Virus, who added uh -huh. a, a supernova antimatter cannon to his saber because he was, quote, getting ganked. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Uh, obviously, we have people like uh, Carlota. Obviously, like everyone knows Carlota. I, for all the stupid thing, the things that he said, a lot of the stuff he did say was, you know, thought-inducing, for lack of a better term. And everyone's gonna know who he is. Like, if Disco is around in five years, you can still ask people, "Hey, remember Carlota?" Everyone's gonna be, "Oh yeah, that guy." <laughs> you know, I'll say this. Um, I pronounce it as Carlotta, but whatever. You know, there have been times where we knew Carlotta was bad. Yeah. And actually, I don't think he ever leaves. But, you know, he I'll say he became more visible. He starts posting. It's the same yeah. thing. You know, it's somebody who has a new account, is speaking like a veteran, yep. is angry about uh, official factions or admins. Admins or official factions or Jihad Joe. <laughs> I don't think he, yeah, mention Jihad Joe. If you ever want to bait him, just mention Jihad Joe. You know, <laughs> yeah, that's admin, admin 101, how to fight Carlota. You heard it here, folks. <laughs> it's not that hard. I get people texting, PMing me all the time. I think that's Carlota. <laughs> yes. He, he just can't control himself. I mean, he has to spout out, you know, and if he just laid low and played the game... No one would bother with him. He, there's no way he can. He can't control himself, and so... But that's what makes him so memorable. Yeah, it's well, that guy. Left, he's like, left he, his mark. That's yeah, sure. he's that's that guy who constantly gets back... <laughs> He constantly gets back and it's like, no, and I want to say, no, he's like the freaking grandpa from Jackie Chan cartoons. It's like, and one more thing. <laughs> like, he, you kick him out the door, he just comes back to the window. And one more thing. <laughs> uh, who else? We, we had Akuma Vito. Like, he was the indie protector. Like, he was the, like... Today we would call him the freaking social justice warrior, but... <laughs> uh, I think Carlotta has become a kind of universal term for all the people that do that. Because I'm pretty sure that oh, we yeah. banned Akuma Bito and called him Carlotta. Yes. And that pissed him off. So, <laughs> <laughs> ah, poor thing. So I'm pretty sure we've, we've got him a few times too. But, uh, but yeah, you know, if people want to come back and behave they can come back and behave, you know, within reason. I mean, I mean, hell, Dodge is still flying. What's that? Dodge is still flying. Yeah, I'm sure. Like, I'm sure. He, everybody he's is. flying, uh, like, below the radar. I mean, Dodge did, did a lot of stupid things. Also, hi, Dodge, I know you're watching these. And, uh, I mean, the at the time when he was in, say, the LSF, like, the people from LSF can easily say Dodge can be a, an amazing person who role plays i mean hell uh nicole hunter like uh I, I i i'm currently not really on very good terms with them but they can easily say that you know if he wants to dodge can be a very productive member of the community so yeah most people could most people can and you know what and if they get banned and they come back and they lie low i mean i don't i'd rather actively. them be upfront <laughs> about it and ask and, and get back in 
you know, the legit way. But if they're even if they're coming in and um, following the rules, laying low, not doing, isn't that what we wanted from them anyway in the first place? Yeah. So basically, the section, the perma ban did, did its thing, technically. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that doesn't mean if I discover them, I'm not going to delete all their accounts. But you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I mean, uh, come on, you you need to have some fun, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh man, I couldn't seriously. If I got perma banned again, like completely perma banned, I wouldn't be able. To, like, if I don't return as fastly, I can't. I probably won't. Just <laughs> <laughs> I can't. I've, I I I just can't. I like you know, it's I, hard I, as an admin is when you're chatting with somebody on Skype, and then knowing that the next day you're gonna have to perma ban the guy. <laughs> <laughs> That's tough. Ow. What? Wait. I'm not saying you're going to Wait, a a am I on the vote again? <laughs> nope. What did I do? There, there's nobody on the Jax, vote. Jax, what did I do? <laughs> I behaved. I, did, I was a good boy. I'm going to, I'm going to sue the fetal position. <laughs> it wasn't me. I swear it wasn't me. I'm sure it has been. We just don't know about it yet. Oh well, yeah, obviously, <laughs> but you know. Oh man. So, so how long are we into this now? <laughs> Forty-three minutes, actually. Oh my goodness! I didn't think I had that much to say. <laughs> no, there's always something to say. Like <laughs> it's it's once. Hey, did you see? Like that guy's gonna get disrupted by NPCs because you know he just took the lane. He it it it, it had that flash effect in the distance. Oh, I saw that. And at this point, no, not again! Aw <laughs> oh, man, NPC disrupting, I swear. Uh, actually, here's a question to you, um, as a player, like, for example, what do you think the idea behind NPCs in Discovery is? Like, would you say that they need to make harder, you know, they need to be made harder for the challenge sake, or they should be, you know, just decoration? Um, well, there's an urgent effect with them. You know, it's kind of neat having them fly around, you know, just for immersion's sake. But, you know, I don't... I remember flying in Gallia a year or so ago. <laughs> oh, my God. And I'd be, like, chased by all bombers. kinds of Gallic bombers. Yes. And, like, 15 behind me. And if I didn't dodge every five seconds, I would see... 15 blue balls flying right yes. through me. So, yeah, that's that was ridiculous. The oh, trade man. lanes were ridiculous. That was the 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 yeah, yeah. That was ridiculous. So, yeah, I, you know, there was somebody made a comment about the jump gates being a little easier, not, you know, blasting, but I think they only affect your shields. Yeah, no kidding. It's not really a I'm problem. If I was going to have to say anything, I'm kind of pro pirate because I think traders have so much advantages. No kidding. And I'm pro official faction because I think for all the crap I have to deal with with them on a regular basis, that they do raise the bar when it comes to, you know, standards of conduct and role play. You know, so yeah, that's that's the good thing about official factions. You have a group of players who look out for each other. So if you get a new member who's maybe a little bit of a tit. You can make sure that you know the official faction is gonna, f you know, take care of him. They are not going to deal with his nonsense. They're just going to smack him back into line, and that's less job for you as an admin then. Yeah, and I'm hoping that the with the uh, perks that the official faction leaders will make sure that their their members stay in line. <laughs> exactly, less fuck ups, less reason for the perks to be taken away. Win win. And, but it is going to be a challenge for them because. I think with the perks, I think that'll automatically draw indies to them. It'll make it easier to attract um, some of the indie players, but but then you're going to have to deal with the indie, you know, recruitment problems. and um, education. Yeah, you're going to have education. to focus a lot more on education. I think exactly in order to which is to a make good sure thing. Like, yeah. re remember when we tested that thing? I was flying around in a rogue IFF right now. How many people actually bothered to PM me telling, hey, you messed up your IFF, hey? One. Uh, and then five people killed me. Yeah, but if you're in a faction and your leader or second in command realizes, hey, you know, I got a member that's not doing, not, you know, set up right, they're going to fix that immediately. Not to mention, factions want to, you know, um, advertise themselves, so 
I mean, a lot of people, like a lot of factions that I was in, they com uh, said, we want to make sure that anyone who mentions our faction mentions it in a good way. If you see a problem, try to help people with it. If you see a person fucking up, for example, uh, I was in uh, the... what's his face? Um, it was the Gryphon Wing, or whatever it was called. It was a very short-lived uh, attempt to a police faction, and we caught a guy with... I think it was a Colossus Rainland train in Liberty, and obviously this guy had no idea what he was doing, obviously, right? You know, and uh, a lot of the LNSs and a couple of the LNs were very eager to, you know, kill him and, you know, sort of throw him out, but no, we just said, hey guys, like we told him in roleplay, hey guys, we're gonna do this, we're gonna help this player, like, you know, go chill somewhere else, like, yeah, okay, fine enough. And, you know, if if this was the sort of activity and the sort of code of conduct, so to speak, that official factions had a mandatory thing for, it would help Disco a lot. Like, technically, the only faction that has this mandatory are the Angels. Because mm. that's their job. Well, yeah, that's, that's their whole purpose. But, it, but it, imagine if you would assign one of the faction requisites is that, you know, they help newbies and they can even report, like, themselves hel helping new players. Like, if you give some sort of rewards to regular factions for this, can you imagine the newbie friendliness of Disco, how it could actually rise up? You know, it's funny you mentioned that, because one of the requirements for getting a, an official faction perk is going to be, how do you treat indies? I'm not really saying... Uh, well, indies, yeah, but uh, I'm speaking about new players in general. Oh, new players. Well, yeah. Most new players are indies, but yeah, I, I get your point. You're flying an indie. Yep. I don't ha I'm not in a faction. <laughs> no, I'm just, I'm just saying, you know, you said most uh, indies are new players. Yeah, well... Well, yeah, well, well okay. We, we, we. In an official faction, because, you know, the way the Disco community is, it's kind of nice to have one admin that's not any, can't be accused of any bias. Doc Holiday cough, Doc Holiday Cough. Cough! Who else? <laughs> <laughs> Dell. Obviously, Dell was awesome well, though. <laughs> so well, no one really mind when he was just dot killing people when they pissed off his rogue. I will tell you, any admin that's on a faction is going to be accused of bias. It just it, it, even regardless. Dude, of any it's true any or not, any admin that is not in a faction is going to be accused of bias. I haven't been because I have no. I mean, I don't have any favoritism towards one faction or another, and I think people realize that. You know, I just I just care about right and wrong. You know, if somebody's screwing around, somebody you know over screwing over somebody else, then you know, I'll find out. I don't care what faction it is, I'll yeah. deal with it. And so, I don't I don't have any emotional attachment towards anybody. Aw, <laughs> that sounded so sad. Actually, for some reason, it sounded so sad. Yeah. Uh, actually, I get, I, I get my fun. You know, in the game, just playing a normal indie player like I have, and go mine my little helium field behind Erie, and <laughs> and kind of you know do my that's my little niche there in the game. Yeah, I might I might reach out later, you know, and you know apply for a faction. I don't know, but right now I'm spending so much time dealing with disco drama that I don't have time. I don't can't do justice to a server to a, to an official faction right now as far as activity goes. Yeah, that's one of the things, like, uh, remember all of these latest factions that I were making, the Alachons, the Torpedoes, the Wasps, uh, the Firestalker Drones, etc. Mm -hmm. One of the things that I really tried to make, uh, the things that I stressed in the faction description was that this is a faction with no obligations. I will not force you to make message dumps. I'm not going to force you to fly ships you don't want to fly. If you're comfortable in a gunboat, go for a gunboat. If you're comfortable in something else, go for something else. All I need from you is roleplay and to have fun. Boom. That's it. And can you imagine the torpedoes had 58 players in them? Yeah. I mean, I could, I could imagine that. How many of them are still, or got banned? <laughs> 
Oh, okay, that is a completely different. <laughs> Damn you, Jack. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, but uh, at it's least okay at that to have point. Fun, but it's not okay to have fun at other people's expense, you know. Oh, uh, that is a completely different topic altogether. I mean, <laughs> if you're having fun and PvP involved, then there's always going to be a side that's losing, and you can't really deny if you get a blue, if you if you're doing good in a you know in a fight that you sort of have that sort of yes, I'm doing it, I'm doing. It. I have you know that sense of pride and achievements you sort of get from it, so. You know, it's always going to be fun at someone else's expenses, but you know, there's nothing stopping you from PMing the guy after you blew him and goes like, "Good fight." So basically, at any at any point, it is going to be fun at someone else's expense, but you know, within reason. Yeah, <laughs> that's pretty much why all of these previous factions that I named sort of fell apart. Because at some point they sort of turn into something that might get me into trouble. So obviously that is one of the reasons why I disband them. And basically they went into roads that I could not really approve of. Yeah, I mean, uh, there's so much shit on my name already. You know, the DPC, the cap exploit thing, all of that nonsense. I don't really need someone else to start saying, oh, Spazzy specifically makes factions that ruin server gameplay. No, I, I usually pull the plug on the project way before that gets out of hand. Yeah, but then, but what's the fallout that results from that? I mean, it's great to have fun and, and to do that, but when it's... I mean, I, w I, would, I would say that the factions that that are created are kind of shallow. Now, of course they're shallow because there's a very low bar to enter them. That's that's one of the pro points of that those fashions that I made. It's like, hey, as like behave, have fun, and I'll give you a faction that you're going to have fun in. I mean, I tried my best. I've seen the problems. Like, I've learned from past mistakes in the sense, like, um, there were two torpedoes. Like, you know, there were two torpedo factions. One mm -hmm. back in the day and the latest one accompanied by wasps, right? So the idea was that at first the rogues were a LR only faction and they specifically hunted down LNS pilots and at the time no one really got that mad about them because first of all you know, lol, LNS caps, who the fuck cares about caps, shoot caps, fuck caps, you know? And secondly I argue that, hey, a lot of the guys in the torpedoes are actually LNSs, you know, they want to have fun, they want to make fun of their friends a little bit, you know, so it, it's all in good fun. But, you know, the accusation was it's too one-sided, it brought too much chaos into it, so the next resurrection of the rogues, it was two factions in one. I simply said, make a character with a rogue I uh, ID and make a character with a Liberty Navy ID. That was an attempt. Obviously, it didn't go as planned because, you know, the rogues aren't around, uh, the torpedoes aren't around anymore, but at least it was an attempt. Attempt at what? Attempt at making things a little bit, bit like, less acidic, so to speak. Hmm. I mean, the less, uh, the thing about creating a new character, uh, a new faction or group, I, they, they weren't even factions, they were groups, right? There, were, there was absolutely no way I could justify that, hey, we're here for the roleplay, we're going to push the ID forward, and, you know, obviously it wasn't about that. No. It was just about people having fun. But that's the problem. That's the problem. Like, it at some point that fun turns a little bit too far, and there's absolutely no way you can justify it anymore. Yeah. Yeah, and then you have to bail because you know it's going to go too far. Well, I didn't just bail. I, I first of all, I just you know, fuck the faction up. I just disbanded publicly, disbanded. Then I bail, because <laughs> otherwise you'd get moments like uh, the I don't even remember. It was a pack of RFP Mjolnirs, who mm -hmm. I I just left that thing after I created it, and then it you know continued to exist for a couple of few months until some of the members actually got banned. Also, that is in fact a behemoth going from Liberty to Kasari with Neon. Wow. It's still alive? <laughs> <laughs> like, it hasn't been molested by the LNS? Wow. <laughs> I think I saw him... I don't know if that was that guy or not. Somebody was um, in outside Erie, was in a behemoth. 
but oh, the man. other day. But Jax, whatever. Jax, I just realized something. Can you imagine? Like, uh, look at the player list and those uh, like 97 slots. Okay, there's some less players now than before, like than an hour ago. But can you imagine? Only a few weeks back, I made a thread. It's like, hey, our server population is so low. Why don't you allow you know multi boxing to be a thing again? <laughs> yeah. Good lord, no more. No, we can't have that. <laughs> <laughs> now I can sort of see why I didn't expect this to happen. Well, I knew the update would bring a, a spike in activity. And so there's I think I think there's a lot of excitement about the update. And so I know the devs are working really hard on it and there's more packed in this update than I ever recall. I mean, they're just basically packing everything that has, has been done needed has been worked on for a long time. And so it, I'm pretty excited about it. I think I think the community will too, and, and we're going to be packed for a while. <laughs> I mean, and so and I'm hoping to sustain it. I mean, with the official faction perks and with the new things with the omicrons and and all kinds of all kinds of stuff, I'm hoping that it's sustainable. So uh, speaking I'm, about the server, actually, um, today I PM's a couple of like if you if you saw the forums that I I made the thread it was like hey who's in charge of the server please, uh, PM me please I made a few calls. Uh, there is a um, data center chain in Europe. It's called Telia, mm -hmm. and I pretty much rang them up as like hey I need to host a server. And it's like yeah okay does it has DDS protection? Like, yeah obviously it has the full thing. Can we provide you with our own server box, like physical server? Can you upkeep it? It's like, sure, no problem, as long as it fits inside the data case. Yeah, it, you have to talk to Ali about that or Canon, because uh, Canon's, I, I Canon's in charge of this. Yeah, Canon's in charge of the server right now, and so I, I don't know. I mean, Ali is kind of just being a, an awesome dev right now for us and, and trying to make things work, and and has I think has her own. Um, Agenda. Angle on that. <laughs> uh, uh, agenda seems like a bad word. I wouldn't say agenda. Hey, look, like it's a uh, it's a uh, Minmatar slave hauling artifacts and missing the lane. Anyway, she's she's working on that really hard on her own angles, and so hopefully, hopefully we can increase the server pop. But I think it's been pretty stable at 135. Yeah, uh, 25, wasn't it? Oh, was it was 125? Is that still? I thought it was raised up. Was it? I didn't even check, yeah. really. We raised it to 135 yesterday or day before. So, yeah, cool. The only problem that I didn't ask about them, I, I also asked about pings, you know, for the U.S. Uh, East Coast, for Australia, New Zealand, and such. It's pretty uh -huh. much the same thing, right? It's pretty much the same thing. The only thing that they did bring up is that costs might be a little bit of issue, so we sort of need to find which... Uh, which country would we like to place the server in physically? You know, so that's the only thing. So if we're, it's all when it comes to data centers and stuff like that, man, that is like way over my head. I have no idea how it, how the process even works. Well, me know? neither. I pretty, uh, I uh, Ali just pointed out in that thread yeah, on the forums, like it's not the problem with the hardware that they do have a uber clocked single core <laughs> right for the server but no one is going to host that thing for some reason and i was like no way that that, that doesn't sound right like hey uh, i'm gonna call these guys up because you know it wouldn't make sense if they were only in latvia because you know no one's gonna ship the damn thing from latvia but mm. they have a chain like uh, they have uh data centers in latvia uh switzerland nor nor uh, the Northerners, uh, Poland, Denmark, and uh, Germany. So the I suppose the only issue is you know the monetary because I think it's some somewhere around the region of a hundred and twenty euros per month. Mm. So that's a little bit more than eighty. <laughs> yeah, but right well, now, um, Canon, if if we're short any month, and we have been short several months in a row. He just he just covers the expense. Yeah, but have you and seen the amount of donations just pooling in right now? Like, well, yeah, it's because we we made the community aware of it. Yeah, exactly. And it's like the community. I will say this: the community should be commended yeah. for what they've done in order to support the servers since it's been made known to them that there is a need. So, I I have to tip my hat to them because, you know, you're doing Canon a tremendous favor. He's been burdened with this for a long time, and 
you know, to be able to, to have to support him. I mean, that makes me feel feel great, and I, I'm sure it makes like Cannon feel really good too. Like, can you imagine, like, uh, if you're like a twenty something early. Uh, like me, and you have your own job and attending college at the same time, for example, can you imagine just cu cutting out like 80 bucks from your salary every month just yeah. for a game server that no one's really... and then that he, that he doesn't play. Yeah, that he doesn't play, and if you go to the forums, like, there's whining threads all over the place, like, ah, this guy's dying. Like, yeah, can you imagine how that feels? Yeah. Like, yeah, I, 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 I wouldn't be able to do that. Like, I, I, I just pull the plug... <laughs> <laughs> and just beat the server to, to, to the death with a fucking crowbar or something just for good measure. Oh, man. Cannon's, Cannon's an awesome guy. I mean, he's got wonderful patience, and he doesn't erupt at players like I do. <laughs> you know, the, sometimes... I, I, I love how you're turning into fellow hoodlum. Yeah. Yeah, well, I like fellow you hoodlum, too. You, you started off so good, like, you were the most patient admin ever. <laughs> it's like, suddenly, I'm reading some of your threads, like, wow, you go, girl. <laughs> you know, so you know, much sass. <laughs> you mentioned Nicole Hunter, you know, Bogus. Yeah. He uh, gave me some good advice the other day, and I really Dude, appreciated sure. it. He goes, remember, kids, not adults. <laughs> Gee, well, well, yeah. I know, I know that sounds kind of patronizing for you know, because if you're like a twenty-something year old, you don't feel like you're a kid. I mean, I pay taxes, damn it. Yeah, but really, a lot of the server are teenagers. Yep. You know, and twenty-somethings, and so I'm forty-six myself. So I'm like, I'm old enough to be the father of a lot of the players that are in this game. And yep, so you're the Dilf of Disco. Once. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's your new I'm, that's I your new title. That. That's your new title, dude. <laughs> you have to do it. So, but once I got that perspective, it's like I'm not dealing with 40 year olds right here. Yeah. I'm dealing with you know people that are you know a lot younger, and so. <laughs> it suddenly my, sheds a completely different. My goal is to different. be a lot more patient. You know? <laughs> I got teenagers at home. I got a 17 year old and a 15 year old at home and so I know what it's like I deal with it at home all the time so and you know but I love them okay so it's easier to deal with like can I just say um I was like 15 where I when I joined so I started playing disco it's very interesting to like grow up in disco why is that guy flying a recruit ID and trading shush no, focus. <laughs> Calm down. No, no, Jax. No, no, no. Stop. Stop. Look at me. Look at me, man. We can do this, dude. Look at me. We can do this. No, no, no. Turn away. Turn away. Turn away. Turn uh, away. Right, turn away. Right, right. No, 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 no. It, that wasn't a guy trading with a recruit ID. He, it, he wasn't. He wasn't. Dude. Shh. Everything's fine. All right. And All just right, calm down now. <laughs> Blue message. <laughs> I will resist. Remember, kids, not adults. <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, seriously though, that's one of the interesting uh, things. Like, um, I just realized that it's it's really been almost eight years, right? It's it's almost like half of my life, and I've seen so many players grow up. And I I mean, we 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 didn't even not only we've seen a lot of players grow up here. Uh, we've also seen a fair amount of community members pass away. He just realizes how long this place is running, and we are still a family. Right. <sighs> yeah, that's so, a good yeah. point. It's so. actually pretty pretty interesting. Like the uh, one day, uh, a few days ago, uh, um, there was this guy back at the day, like when I started playing. There was this uh, also a Latvian, a father and son. It was Monty and Mr. Killer, right? Mm -hmm. And he was like 13 at the time. And now I just, you know, talk about Monty is like, oh, that little kid. It's like, what do you mean, little kid? He's 21. It's like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> realizations. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like, what? <laughs> you get a 10 year old game, somebody starts at 15, they're not a teenager anymore. <laughs> no, no, no kidding. <laughs> Oh man, it's like just one of these revelations. Just <laughs> it's it's odd. Um, something. Does this guy even have an ID? <laughs> Jax. <laughs> right, no, he doesn't. He doesn't. <laughs> he doesn't. He doesn't. 
<laughs> oh man. Oh, but still though. Um, something that I really noticed that at some point uh, in the latest few updates, Discovery has been made into a lot more newbie friendly place because I remember how long, you know, people back in 2012 which joined in 2010, I have saw them struggle, like they struggled for a long time and they still struggle, we still look at these players and just, you know, roll our eyes and then there are players like, um, I, I'm just gonna call out, like, uh, uh, I've met uh, Impy, for example, I've, I've met Tal, uh, like, these players joined in 2013 and they have more experience with Disco than a lot of the vets have, which is Something happened in these times that made the progression of a new player in Disco very rapid and very effective. And we just need to figure out what the hell it was. Hmm. I don't know. Yeah, that's a good point. I don't know how to make it more newbie friendly. I mean, it's, I think the community members just need to invest stop. in themselves. Yeah, exactly. The stop. Stop. Ex like, we need to stop uh, expecting that someone's going to do the job for us, like, eh, we have the angels. Well, yeah. The angels aren't around all the time. You are. And One I thing do that I've, I've come across when I'm doing sanctions and newbies come up, come up um, I've been trying to bestial a lot of ships, and the noob ships, because the problem is if you leave a sanction note in their hold, they're probably they won't notice. know. Well, they, they, even if they did notice, they won't know exactly what offense they made. Because it's a pretty vague. Each sanction note is kind of vague. It doesn't tell you exactly what you did wrong. So you just stick them in Bastille, and you yeah, will, they, they will come to wonder, the forum. How do I get out of Bastille? <laughs> how do I get out of here? There's no way to get out. And so they will I PM mean, players. Somebody's going to tell them. Go on the forums. You need to go on the forums, and you need to ask. So they go on the forums, and they'll see their name sanctioned, and they start posting why. You know, can I get my shit back? And <laughs> you know, you say, okay, just show us you understand the rule. This is what you did wrong. Yeah. I didn't do anything wrong, you're just a bunch of biased assholes! <laughs> well, that would be Saba, but... Uh... <laughs> ja Jax, you promised that you wouldn't do that! <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, that guy just annoys the crap out of me. Oh, man, remember something about, oh, and I want to get in trouble. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> no, no, we won't mention any more names. Though. Yeah, it's okay, <laughs> Saba's an asshole anyway, so who the fuck cares? <laughs> Well, I won't have to worry about him much longer, I'm sure. Oh, <laughs> really now? <laughs> oh, well, this so. this episode turned... Actually, this episode is going on an hour at 10, so I think we should pause here for a little while, at least. At least... All right. Yeah, as much as we... Good. We need to get a drink. I'm getting kind of punch drunk anyway. I need to... <laughs> <laughs> I need to fill up my tea. Exactly. <laughs> and I need to... Um, yeah, I need to refill. Well, thanks for having me. It was fun. I enjoyed t the chat. Oh, don't worry. You're not going anywhere. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to continue this in part two. Uh, this was uh, Spazy Dwagen, and this was Jax. Save Have fun, guys. Yes.